Uh, thanks everyone for attending in person and online. Uh, as Robin mentioned, I work with the Building and Safety Standards Branch and we are the branch of the provincial government that has the responsibility and honour to uh, bring technical building regulations into force in the province, but we don't have the privilege of enforcing those regulations on the ground or of actually building buildings to those regulations. So uh, these kinds of, uh, of meetings online and in person uh, and this uh, really need to be the uh, ongoing dialogue that's essential to our work so that we can understand whether the regulations we develop and uh, uh, bring into force uh, have achieved the policy outcomes that we're after. And with, uh, in relation to the energy step code, uh, there are a lot of policy uh, objectives at play and we really want to make sure that success reflects all of those policy objectives moving forward. In terms of the context, certainly from uh, the province, the provincial perspective, uh, what brought us to the table is primarily uh, the Building Act. The Building Act was brought into force in March of 2015 and really uh, establishes the way that we regulate uh, design and construction of buildings in the province of BC. This establishes uh, really a shift of authority from uh, local governments and some other players, uh, primarily to the province for establishing technical building requirements. Really their desire to improve the consistency of, of what's required of builders throughout the province um, and improve the competency of builders and those enforcing building regulations and supporting innovation. But as it relates to the energy step code, we're really focused on that consistency piece. And uh, through the presentation, I'll walk through how that relates to what we're doing here uh, relative to the status quo today and the kinds of programs that are in the, in the market today. The other piece that's really important for today and over the next few months uh, in particular is that by this December 2017, uh, Section 5 of the Building Act will come into force. And that is the uh, end of local building requirements is what the Building Act calls it. As it relates to energy efficiency, any program that rests is secured by bylaw at the local government level will not be enforceable by December 2017. And the Energy Step Code is that transitional tool to replace any bylaw secured programs today, voluntary or otherwise, uh, that are going to be impacted by the Building Act and that uh, through the Energy Step Code, we're introducing a transitional tool there to transition those existing programs. The other piece, that's the le uh, legislative and regulatory background for uh, why the province is involved in the Building Act. The other piece from a policy perspective is that the Climate Leadership Plan was finalized this summer and based on the good work that was being done by everyone involved in the uh, development of the Energy Step Code, uh, the province was able to make some fairly specific commitments related to buildings uh, over the next 15 years. Primarily that provincially we're looking to move the base BC building code, the minimum acceptable standard for construction, to net zero ready by 2032. The energy step code is our working definition of what we mean by net zero ready and how we plan to get there. There's also a commitment in the Climate Leadership Plan to enable local governments through uh, what's referred to as a stretch code in the Climate Leadership Plan, but is now the Energy Step Code, to move down that pathway uh, at their own pace relative to the uh, abilities and demands within each community towards that 2032 goal that we have collectively in this province. In terms of the current state, so the Energy Step Code is meant to be a transitional tool and so we met with a number of stakeholders to really uh, learn from what we've done so far. Over the last 10 years or so, local governments, uh, as supported by the, the province, have enacted policies, bylaws, requirements and incentive programs that support a number of perfectly good programs, but that all define energy efficiency in a slightly different way. Whether it's Energy Star, Passive House, R2000, LEED or Built Green, they all take a slightly different approach to energy efficiency. And when every local government references a slightly different program for industry, in a broader scale or regional context, that creates enormous inconsistency. And so that's what the Building Act is really trying to tackle. We really wanted to see if we could make sure that there were tools for local governments that were flexible to improve energy efficiency without ending up with 190 different rules in 190 different local governments. The other issue as well is that uh, any bylaws that reference these programs by this December practically will be uh, unenforceable by this December. So we need a transitional tool. There's really a demand there for the energy step code. At a more practical level, uh, Certainly stakeholders mentioned that many of these programs, while uh, they all bring something positive to the table in terms of improved performance, do have some issues that we have the opportunity to address uh, with the Energy Step Code. 
The first is a points-based approach um, that really tells builders uh, all the components that if they put them into a building, it's assumed will end up with an efficient building. And that really going forward uh, for the highest levels of performance, we need to tell builders what an efficient building is, what level of performance are we looking for, and allow industry to determine what components will help make that efficient building. And lastly is the occupant. Uh, we can do all sorts of good work on a building, but if we make them really complex and have them rely on complicated equipment, occupants will never be able to realize those energy efficiency benefits out of the building. And so we need an approach with the energy step code, and I believe we've got one, that really simplifies uh, mechanical equipment inside a building so that building owners, strata councils, homeowners, and occupants uh, are able to actually operate efficient buildings simply. And that really relies on what's called an envelope first approach. Before we get into some of the technical details of the step code, it's also worth highlighting the fact that it is the result of uh, really an incredible collaborative effort from a number of different stakeholders uh, at a single table representing all sorts of different policy perspectives. Provincially, uh, through the Building Act, we were really primarily there from the Building and Safety Standards Branch to improve the consistency of building requirements. We had industry representatives there interested in uh, affordable housing or a predictable transition for industry as we go towards our 2032 targets and certainly local governments and others at the table to ensure that we're actually achieving some GHG emissions reduction outcomes and more efficient buildings as we move forward. And so the energy step code is the result of this collaborative effort, which is the same uh, similar to the way that the national building code is developed as well where we've got a recommendation here that represents the perspectives of all stakeholders, not simply the perspective of one stakeholder that's then vetted against the rest. We really do have uh, the result of a collaborative process here with the Energy Step Code. It's worth noting how we got here uh, and really worth acknowledging that this started at the local government level with a handful of stakeholders. Um, the province, when this first started in 2014, was an observer in this process and was interested to hear we'd made some changes to the BC Building Code in 2013 and so local governments gathered together and wanted to make an, uh, see if they could recommend a consistent approach to themselves around uh, beyond code requirements for energy efficiency. And so provincially, we, we observed that process uh, and uh, realizing that the Building Act was going to be coming into force in early 2015, uh, we're waiting to engage when the Building Act would create a clear mandate for how local governments might be, implement, be able to implement the recommendations that came out of this white paper in 2014. From that recommendation, the uh, provincial government uh, established the energy efficiency uh, working group through provincial leadership, but with many of the stake same stakeholders and then uh, adding to those. And through 2015 and 2016, uh, up until August of 2016, we worked with this working group to create consensus recommendations for what should be in the energy step code from a technical perspective, how are we going to build these buildings, and also from a local government enforcement perspective, how should this be implemented, how quickly, what are some of the conditions, what are some of the concerns, and how can we collectively make sure that we bring in a step code that's successful. Ultimately, those uh, recommendations were put in a report that was accepted by the provincial government, is available on the Building and Safety Standards Branch website, and informed uh, the policy work behind the Climate Leadership Plan. So here we are in early 2017. This is really the first steps of putting the uh, energy step code into play. We have proposed regulation at this moment in time. Um, we are working towards having uh, regulation finalized prior to the election. So that means uh, certainly by April we'd be, have regulation in force, as well as authority for local governments to, uh, to reference these new technical requirements that would be likely to be in the building code. Um, in local government bylaws. So new technical requirements and uh, new authority for local governments to enforce those uh, as the, well, under the authorities that they've got in the Local Government Act and Community Charter currently. The other piece between this new authority and these new technical requirements would be a provincial policy guideline around how to appropriately define success for implementing these new technical requirements. Energy efficiency is a complex issue and implementing this successfully in each community requires a lot of flexibility but a lot of support. And so certainly we've got a number of research projects and surveys underway and we'll be referencing one later today uh, that we hope you'll fill out to make sure that we've got really good guidance for industry, local governments and policymakers going forward to make sure that the step code is successful. 
All of this work through, December, uh, through 2017 is really uh, leading towards an important milestone in this pro process, which is December 15th, 2017. This is when existing bylaws, whether voluntary or mandatory, if there is a bylaw that deals with energy efficiency of buildings, it will be impacted by the Building Act, and it will no longer be enforceable after December 15th, 2017. And so we've got a number of months now to transition those existing programs to the energy step code. And we've got supports in place to make sure that that's done successfully and works in the context of each local government that's considering transitioning their existing programs. It's also worth highlighting that uh, we're ahead of a national process that uh, really kicked off this fall. There are some mandates let letters that have been sent to national standing committees to develop a national step code. And the work we're doing in British Columbia is really leading the way nationally. And they're going to be, uh, they're establishing a process nationally that will build on the work we're doing here. And so uh, we're likely to see increased resources in terms of research and supports and program supports through uh, the National Research Council and National, uh, Natural Resources Canada as well in their programs. Um, so we are leading the way, but we are not alone, uh, and we're not going to be playing catch-up uh, based on the pace we're at right now. The recommendations from the working group, um, it's worth being aware for local governments considering this. We really did it based on a needs approach, and the primary focus right now for existing programs is on residential construction. And so we have targets for all houses and small buildings, so this is residential buildings up to three stories throughout the province in all climate zones. And for large buildings, we have targets for residential and commercial buildings only in climate zone four. That's in lower mainland and southern Vancouver Island. The Energy Step Code is a work in progress. We will have additional targets and steps in the future. We're looking to include all buildings at some point uh, with appropriate targets, but for the time being, uh, what we have right now is recommendations for all residential buildings from the smallest to the largest um, and some commercial buildings in the Lower Mainland and Southern Vancouver Island. I mentioned the 2032 commitment in the Climate Leadership Plan towards Net Zero Ready and that the Energy Step Code is really our working definition. In fact, it's uh, surprising, but it is difficult to have a consistent definition of energy efficiency. And so in regulation, the Energy, is, the energy Step Code will provide that definition for us. With an envelope first approach, the first thing we're taking a look at is how, how our uh, building envelope performs. So this is our insulation and our air barrier details around the building. So what kind of air leakage we're getting around doors and windows, and what kind of free solar heat gain we're getting through the sun through well-placed and designed windows inside the house. The other piece, a more traditional approach to energy efficiency that we're including in addition to this uh, focus on the building envelope is equipment efficiency. How efficient is our furnace, our hot water tanks, and our ventilation equipment? Fairly standard approach, but by separating these two between envelope and equipment, we're making sure that you can't rely entirely on complex equipment and that you have to balance the two. And all of these requirements in terms, how, uh, in terms of how we're going to evaluate the performance of a house, it is truly a system. All buildings operate as a system when we're dealing with energy efficiency and that we're moving away from a prescriptive checklist approach and we're moving towards a performance-based approach. This shift is really important. It's quite significant and it reflects really most modern code development approaches. What we're moving away from is what's seen on the screen here. The current requirements for houses today take a fairly traditional, what's called a prescriptive approach to building code requirements. We have a list of what kind of doors, windows, insulation you need to put in your house, and how you connect all these details to the air barrier. And we assume implicitly that it will end up with being an efficient building, but we never test that. And we never tell you how efficient the building actually has to be. The shift under the energy step code and in all sorts of uh, areas of the building code uh, that are under development right now, we're seeing a move towards a performance-based approach. We're, the energy step code will tell builders how efficient to make a building and how we go about measuring that, but not how exactly they have to build it. Largely for houses and small buildings, this will be relying on the work of energy modelers uh, certified through Natural Resources Canada. Um, and in large complex buildings, uh, engineers and architects working on these projects as well. So they'll be doing an energy model to understand how the house as a system works to become efficient to the targets that we've set in the energy step code. The other piece on site for all buildings is that we're going to do an air tightness test. Air tightness is essential to an efficient building and it's a really good marker of whether we've achieved the outcomes we're after on site. 
And so all buildings will have to go through a blower door test, quite common in houses and will be required going forward in large buildings under the energy step code. But what we don't have is all of the prescriptive requirements that pick and choose what kind of products or materials have to go into a building for energy efficiency. That's really left up to the builder and those working with them to create an energy model that achieves their desired outcomes and the desired outcomes of the building occupant. It's worth being aware that while the energy step code itself is brand new, it reflects programs that are already in place today. And that really this is about a transition of taking existing programs that exist throughout the province, referencing equivalents to all of the steps of the step code from base building code equivalent through energy star and built green requirements in steps two and three, all the way up to our net zero uh, goals, whether that's net zero ready home through uh, Canadian Home Builders Association or the Passive House Institute or other equivalent programs. These exist all in some form today and we're going to see local governments transitioning their existing programs to reference the step code. But what that means for builders on the ground won't necessarily be a change practically in terms of what they have to build whether it's an Energy Star building today or a Step 3 building under the Energy Step Code. That's really worth keeping in mind. In terms of timelines, uh, this is a call to action for local governments and for industry to prepare. But there is uh, more than just preparation that needs to happen at the local government level. We need to be prepared to act because bylaws need to change by December 2017 or they will be of no force and effect by that date. And so when the proposed regulation uh, is signed, local governments will have that authority to reference the energy step code in their bylaws. So they'll need to review their existing programs and reference the step code equivalent to whatever their programs are today to the step code after December 2017. By December, Section 5 of it is in force and all those existing bylaws need to be transitioned by that time or else we end up in some real enforcement questions around what authority local governments have to enforce those old bylaws. And so we want to see them all transitioned successfully by that time. And then once we've transitioned existing programs over the next year or so, between 2018 and 2020, we're going to be have the Energy Step Code Council working with local governments to take a look at new proposed programs and find out how we can move towards that 2032 goal throughout the province with new programs in a way that balances housing affordability, energy efficiency, reasonable transition in the market for industry in terms of new products and approaches. And that's really going to be, an, again, a collaborative effort over the next number of years once we've transitioned existing programs. All of this, of course, building towards our 2032 goal of getting net zero ready buildings in the building code. But the focus is really going to be on, we need to move the base. This isn't just about having a few example homes. We need to find a way of broadly shifting the market towards lower steps and learning more about the higher steps over the next few years between uh, now and 2020 so that we can take some next uh, ambitious steps between now and our 2032 targets. But while we have a lot of years to look at here, the next year is really important around transitioning existing programs at the local government level. This means understanding what you've got referenced in bylaws and understanding what the step code equivalent would be. But we have supports in place to help that transition. The uh, final note that I'll leave you with is that there are supports. The Energy Step Code Council that represents all of the stakeholders involved in developing the step code will be there to help implement the step code successfully as well. We have a range of best practice guide, research studies going on, uh, training and capacity scans, and communications materials for political decision makers at the local government level, as well as builders and trades and others in the industry. Uh, as well, the Energy Step Code going forward will be your conduit to provincial, federal, and utility funding programs as we work with those partners as well to make sure that everything's streamlined and consistent. To make sure that these materials are relevant to you, it's really valuable that you provide us with input. We will be sending out a link to a survey and really encourage you to fill that out to make sure that the supports we have uh, meet the needs you have at the local government level. With that, uh, thanks very much and I'll, I'm happy to take questions at the uh, end of the presentations.